there must be events in the caboose and the engine that are simultaneous for the train. Let's find it. Suppose you have a flash from the caboose at A as before. It gets to the middleman at D. And we ask, when must a flash occur in front of the nose of the engineer such that the middleman would see that flash at the same moment, D, that the flash arrived from the caboose driver? Well, we look at 45 degree angles to the left all along the front of the train, starting at the front of the train, and we see that if it launches at E, it'll get to D just when the flash from the caboose arrived. So E and A for the moving train are simultaneous. Why? Because they're sent from equal distances from the center of the train, but arrive at the same moment at the middleman. Therefore, A and E are simultaneous. We call the line through A and E a line of simultaneity. And this is a dramatic change from Newtonian Galilean physics, because here we can see graphically that there is a line of simultaneity that is different for the moving frame than for a still frame. And indeed, we could draw all of the lines of simultaneity parallel to that line of simultaneity. That line of simultaneity that goes from A through E, we call the X prime axis. Why? Because the X prime axis are all the points that have T prime equals zero. And we know that the origin has T prime equals zero. We set it that way such that the, when the caboose is zero corresponded to the spatial position of the station zero, we set their clocks to be zero at that moment. So all the points along X prime have T prime equals zero, and all the points along T prime are such that X prime equals zero. We can look at the difference between Galilean space-time on the right and Minkowski space-time on the left. Minkowski space-time on the left, we see, has the feature that the T prime axis, the time axis of a moving observer, tilts. That's not different from anything in Galileo or Newton's physics. It's just a nice graphical way of presenting it. What's new is that the X prime axis, the lines of simultaneity, are tilted. In Galileo's world, if Galileo had ever drawn space-time, he would have had a T axis, an X axis, and the T prime axis would have tilted. It could have had any tilt you wanted because the train could travel 25,000 times the speed of light if you want. There's no limit to how far you can get an X over a tiny amount of time. But here's the rub. The lines of simultaneity for every moving frame are all the same. The fact that the lines of simultaneity are all horizontal is just the graphical presentation of Newton's true, absolute, and mathematical time. Simultaneity is fixed. If A and B are simultaneous in one frame, they're simultaneous in every frame. So the X prime axis is the same as the X axis, and it's the same as any other moving frames X axis. So they all correspond. This is a summary in graphical form of the fundamental difference between relativity and classical physics.